हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा डियर डिवोटिस थैंक यू फॉर ज्वाइनिंग श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास लेट स्टार्ट विथ जय राधा माधव प्रेयर्स जय राधा जय राधा माधव कुं 
Krishna, dear devotees, thank you for joining us in the Srimad Bhagavatam class today. So again, we would like to welcome the viewers. Hare Krishna Devi. Hare Krishna. Welcome dear viewers. Komal Tilokani Ji, Hare Krishna. Bal Sahib Patil, Hare Bol, dear viewers. जो आज पहली बार ज्वाइन कर रहे हैं खास आप सबका बहुत बहुत स्वागत है हरेन जी माधे जी अभिषेक जी अमरो जी बागा सागर जी वेलकम एवरीवन हरे कृष्णा शरद तब हरे मनीष सिंह मिथु ओहाद अक्की तोतन कमल बद्रा गुलशन तुरजय शिलम बरसानव सत्य प्रसाद गौरव जग्गी प्रेम कल्पना शिक्षा तिथि हरे कृष्णा डियर व्यूअर्स आप सभी का बहुत बहुत अभिनंदन है आज की श्रीमद् भागवतम क्लास में हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज सो टुडे द टाइटल ऑफ दिस चैप्टर इज पृथु महाराज मीटिंग विद द फोर कुमारस एंड हियर वी गेट अमेजिंग लेसंस एज हाउ ऑस्पिशियस इट इज टू हैव यू नो एसोसिएशन ऑफ प्योर डिवोटीज how one should behave and welcome those devotees and how we can develop you know de- devotional qualities in this very life and finish our business in this material world and go back home back to godhead so again let's start with the mangalacharan prayers om namo bhagavate vasudevaya om namo bhagavate vasudevaya ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर शवता स्वकथा कृष्ण पुण्यशवण कीर्तन हृदयतस्थो ह्यभद्रा विधुनोती सुहसता नष्ट प्रायेश्व भद्रेशु नित्यम भागवत सेवया भगवते उत्तम श्लोके भक्तिर भक्ति नष्ट की हरे कृष्णा डियर डिवोटीज सो टुडे विल बी डूइंग द रेसिटेशन ऑफ द फर्स्ट वर्स ऑफ श्रीमद् भागवतम कैंटो फोर चैप्टर ट्वेंटी टू द टाइटल ऑफ द चैप्टर इज वंस अगेन पृथु महाराज मीटिंग विद द फोर कुमार सो इस चैप्टर में हमको बहुत इम्पॉर्टेंट लेसन्स देखने को मिलते हैं राइट मीन्स पिछला वाला जो चैप्टर था उसमें था चैप्टर 21 में दैट ऑल द सिटीजन वर ग्लोरीफाइंग महाराज पृथु और एंड देर इज अ सिमिलर इंसिडेंस ऑफ अदर पर्सनालिटीज वन दे वर बीन ग्लोरीफाइड एंड दे सॉ एन ऑनरेबल पर्सनैलिटी यू नो दैट दे शुड बी वर्शिपिंग अपियर एंड दे कुड नॉट कीप अप टू द स्टैंडर्ड ऑफ पृथु महाराज सो अगेन वील बी डिस्कसिंग सम ऑफ दो सीनारियोज and how we should welcome a saintly devotee as well as how auspicious it is the house and all our surroundings become when such devotees appear and they give us the shelter of their lotus feet and what we should inquire from them very important impression right because in parampara system hum logo ko ye samajhna chahiye ki jab किसी संत के पास जाते हैं किसी साधु के पास जाते हैं किसी वैष्णव के पास जाते हैं तो हमें किस तरह की इंक्वायरीज रखनी चाहिए हमें उनसे क्या मांगना चाहिए राइट शिला प्रभुपाद एक हम लोग लास्ट वीक आई वॉज हियरिंग वन लेक्चर जिसके अंदर शिला प्रभुपाद कहते हैं यू नो वेन पीपल आस्क लाइक लॉर्ड गिव मी माई डेली ब्रेड अरे भगवान तो कुत्ते बिल्ली को भी यू नो ही इंश्योर्स दैट दे गेट फूड won't he give us our daily bread so again this is not a thing to ask what we should ask is very important or ye to lord brahma ne bhi reveal kiya hai devashi narad ko ke we should be looking for things which we cannot find in this material world and ultimately krishna prem because that will give us transcendental bliss and that comes not by claiming but by serving right people in this today's time they want to become the controller but devotees want to become controlled by the supreme personality of godhead and his desires and by the spiritual master to aise mein hum log is pe dekhte hain ki how loving interactions happen between two exalted personalities again chatur kumaras are referred to sometimes as single entity right sanak sanatan sanandana and sanat kumar 
They are referred to as single entity and they are older than Lord Shiva because they were born before Lord Shiva. And then Prithu Maharaj, he is an exalted personality. He attains perfection just by doing archana, worship of the Lord. So please join us in the recitation of the first verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 22. Hare Krishna Devi, have you shared the link for the verse? Hare Krishna. So we'll be sharing the link for the verse very shortly. And there are some amazing lessons in this chapter where we see how we can make our life full of bliss, full of happiness and remove all kind of anxieties away from this life, right? And to develop these qualities, and develop a life of Shuddha Bhakti. Kaise hum log pure devotional service se endowed apni life ko enrich kar sakte hain. Where there will be complete transcendent bliss everywhere. Hare Krishna. So Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 22, Verse 1. Please join us in the recitation. Maitreya Vacha Janeshu Praganatsva Evam Prithum Prithula Vikramam Tatra Prajangamur Munayash Chatwaraha Surya Varchasaha Translation by His Divine Grace, Sesi Bhakti Vedan Swami Shila Prabhupada. The great sage Maitreya said, While the citizens were thus praying to the most powerful king Prithu, the four Kumaras who were as bright as the sun arrived on the spot. Hare Krishna. There is no purport to this verse. Please join us for Guru Prati. Namo Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishthaya Bhutale Srimate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Niti Namine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesha Shunyavadi Pashyati Deshatarine Om Ajnana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshurun militam yena tasmai shi guru venamaha Mukham karoti vachalam pangum lagayate girim yat kripata daham one day shi gurum dina taranam Shi Krishna chaitanya prabhu nityananda shi advaita gadadhar shiva sadigor bhakta vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, dear devotees. So, just like I have told you earlier, as I told you earlier, that there is this kind of incidents have happened in other personalities in life. Mein bhi. Means, what is happening? That in chapter 21, just like I have Prithu Maharaj, you know, he was entering the city and the whole city was decorated to welcome him. And then, you know, the citizens, they were glorifying the king, Prithu Maharaj. And Prithu Maharaj was also reciprocating with them in a very loving manner. Just like a father and son relationship, he was considering all his citizens like his own children. And he was taking care of them. And the citizens were regarding Prithu Maharaj just like a you know, child regards his father or father. So similarly, they were glorifying Prithu Maharaj for his you know, love for his affection and for his perfect ruling. And Prithu Maharaj, was he ruler of India? No, no. He was the ruler of earth, right? Bharat was the name, you know, of all the lands on planet earth was referred to as Bharat. And so the whole planet was referred, the whole ruling, uh, you know, domain on earth was referred unanimously as Bharat, coming from Bharat. Son of Drishtadum. So again, that's another place we know two of our, two other Bharats. Uh, one was, uh, you know, Maharaj Bharat, as we hear in Mahabharat, you know, uh, that you know, that lineage is being referred. But also, you know, he was again Maharaj Bharat. He was, uh, and then we have Bharat. So a third Bharat is one who appears as the younger brother of Lord Ramchandra. So here. You know, the great sage Maitreya, he is identifying that King Prithu, you know, he was being glorified. And he was the emperor of this world, on, of this planet. So just like, you know, of Chandrama, Som is the ruler and he is also the presiding deity. So again, Prithu Maharaj had taken up the role of presiding deity of planet Earth. 
so that has also been revealed in this particular chapter just like for sun you know surya dev or lord vivaswan he is the presiding deity he is the ruler of sun planet so similar to that maharaj pitu was the ruler of this planet earth and he was being glorified so jab you know people are singing your prayers there is bound that you may develop some pride but in case of prithu maharaj even though he was you know very handsome he was very youthful he was an exalted personality who was blessed by lord vishnu himself and he you know even indra had come and asked for his forgiveness and he immediately embraced indra such a great personality prithu maharaj who attains perfection just by archana vidhi right so we talk about the nine process of devotional service shavanam kirtanam vishnu smaranam pad sevanam archanam vandanam dasyam sakhyam atmanivedanam so shavanam just by hearing shukdev gos uh, parikshit maharaj is hearing shukdev goswami this is whole for seven days parikshit maharaj is fasting the last seven days of his life and shukdev goswami appears and so parikshit maharaj is inquiring from him he puts very important questions in front of shukdev goswami and constantly for seven days of hearing he attains perfection shukdev goswami by chanting shamanam kirtanam so by kirtan by glorifying the lord shukdev goswami attains perfection vishnu smaranam so again by constantly remembering lord vishnu prahlad maharaj he attains perfection pad sevanam by serving the lotus feet of lord goddess of fortune lakshmi devi she attains perfection and archanam archana is where prithu maharaj by performing you know the worship of the lord and his devotees he attains perfection so again he performed 99 yag uh, ashwamedh yagyas 101 was being interrupted by indra as we have covered earlier and even then you know lord brahma came and he blessed that so be it you know don't cause any more spread of irreligion because it is not you who is spreading a religion it is indra being jealous of you is spreading a religion and so the purpose of a ruler a kshatriya or a proper you know human being is to engage in the mission of the lordship and lord he says there are three purposes he appears paritranaya sadhana vinashaya chadushkritam dharma sansthapana thaye sambhavami yuge yuge so the third one is dharma sansthapan pehla to hai first is paritranaya sadhana to protect the devotees to actually have loving exchange with the devotees vinashaya chadushkritam to you know subdue to annihilate the miscreants and then to reestablish the principles of religion and so it religion was spreading because of indra trying to steal away the horse and taking on different kind of you know uh wearings like outer paraphernalia like he was acting like a sanyasi and pseudo sanyasi so it religion was spreading and many other you know non bona fide sampradayas came whose spiritual master happens to be now indra so here when lord brahma said so be it he was satisfied and uh, lord vishnu himself came with indra and indra asked for forgiveness prithu maharaj immediately embraced him such an exalted personality but not a tinge of pride he is actually reciprocating with his citizens saying that please engage in devotional service please seek to satisfy the supreme personality of godhead because when a ruler extract taxes from his citizens the one sixth you know of whatever they earn or whatever they make that is what is being extracted as a taxes and so this tax has you know part of the punya which will also help the king to spread and also be you know party of the punya you know when he is in, increasing uh, principles of religion is reestablishing principles of religion as a representative of the lord and if the ruler does not perform you know his or her duties and in that case what happens that the citizens they become non devotees and they are seeking sans gratification well this is kali age we see those examples very he- much here that people are you know many rulers or administrators they are out there sometimes even putting the face of you know like they are very religious and they honor our religion and so forth but 
in reality they are only looking for votes or looking for name fame and glories and you know seeking sense gratification so such administrators driving so people are not fooled they see such rulers and they understand he's looking for sense gratification he's going to steal from us and as in the 12th canto we have previously read how the citizens they seeing the rulers who are just like thieves and rogues you know they run to the forest that's another case where we have seen the many of the uh, population they run to the forest become adivasis they give up this you know city life where the administrators can, are just acting as thieves and rogues or they you know start to do the same uh, and you know they practice the same philosophy as that of the rulers and hold back their treasury or whatever their wealth is and there lose lose scenario happens so even if you know such citizens who become non devotees even if uh, tax is extracted from them it is an you know uh, it also has the pop the sinful action you know of the citizens as how they are trying to hoard and acquire wealth through you know not the right means incorrect means and so the king partakes of those sinful reactions so again the sinful reactions are taken by the administrators and that's a lose lose scenario however in this kali age even though we have these situations we can attain perfection it is simply through the chanting of the holy name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare and shila prabhupa said yes there are two aspects very important yam and niyam niyam is to chant minimum 16 rounds actually we should be chanting incessantly so kirtanam you know glorification of the lordship that was is also going on here so again that should be incessantly going on and nityam bhagavata sevaya it is not that you have a bhagavat saptaha but it's every day we should be reading shrimad bhagavatam we should be doing shravanam we should be doing kirtanam so this these two are very important elements and so prithu maharaj by archana he attains perfection vandanam akrur attains perfection by singing prayers to the lordship dasyam lord hanuman he attains perfection bajrang badi attains perfection just by serving the lord lord ram chandra and then sakyam arjuna attains perfection by being friendly to the lordship and atmanivedanam daitya raj bali maharaj he attains perfection by surrendering everything atmanivedanam everything whatever he possesses even himself not just what he possesses but even his own body he says my dear lord your third step please place it on my head so that way he provides the three steps of land that you know bhaman dev asked for and so bhaman dev is bought by his love and his devotion and becomes his gatekeeper can you imagine lord this comes the gatekeeper of his devotee so this is a loving exchange it's a very deep matter and this the event of you know uh, uh, bali maharaj in vaman dev was mainly to show that how lord wants to glorify his devotees and how devotees want to satisfy the lord so that is a great example and here prithu maharaj he is being glorified by the citizens for being such a righteous such a you know affectionate such a caretaking administrator but very strong he used to hold a danda right you know just like yamraj he holds a danda so khadak you know that's another way of saying it so the great sage maitreya he is revealing this past time to mahatma vidur and this past time was revealed later on to uh, maharaj pariksha by shukdev goswami in the assembly where this was being revealed by shukdev goswami was presented personality suta goswami and later on suta goswami went to namasharani and where the sages headed by shanaka rishi heard the whole shrimad bhagavatam so this is where we are in this particular chapter so there is a similar incident that happened when someone is being glorified so again once devraj indra he was being glorified in his assembly hall right just like prithu maharaj is being glorified here so you know in the sixth canto this particular past time comes we have covered that sixth canto and we will be covering for those who have not seen you can always go back to our youtube channel and see that particular sixth uh, you know canto chapter 7 
Indra offends his spiritual master Brahaspati. And what happens is very similar to, you know, similar situations. But then how the behavior is different, that is visible. Because what happened was, Indra was being glorified by the, you know, assembly members and the Apsaras was dancing and the Dharvas was singing his glories. And in the midst of that, suddenly, you know, sage Brahaspati, the spiritual master of the devas, the demigods, he came into the assembly hall. And as he entered the assembly, you know, Indra saw him. He was supposed to get up and, you know, welcome him. He did not get up and welcome his own spiritual master. He should have, you know, provide, uh, ensure that his spiritual master has a proper sitting place and that he is worshipped nicely. But because he was filled with pride, he didn't do that. And that was his fall down. And so, Brahaspati, you know, understanding that Indra has become proud, he immediately vanished from that spot. So again, and that caused whole series of tribulations for Indra Dev, the king of the demigods. He was even in that stage because of pride, was in complete anxiety and continues to be in anxiety. Anyone who is, you know, seeking to seek sense gratification, name, fame and glories is constantly in anxiety and that's the fact of life. We should understand. And that's why Srila Vishnu Chakrati Thakur, he instructs us in his famous prayers for the spiritual master. Yasya prasada bhagavat prasado Yasya prasada nagati kuttu api Dham stvam tasya yasya sti sangham Vande guru shi charinaravindam By the satisfaction of the spiritual master, the supreme personality of God had become satisfied. satisfied. But by not satisfying the spiritual master, there is no chance of being promoted to the plane of Krishna consciousness. One should therefore meditate and pray for his mercy three times a day and offer respectful obeisances unto him, the spiritual master. So again, here we understand that, you know, any exalted personality, if they come, just like Maharaj Prithu, now his exemplary behavior is visible when he sees the Chatur Kumaras appearing, you know, coming through the way of the sky, Akash Marg se arahe. And he, they are glowing like suns, right? The, the, the Tejaswa. Then unka Tejaswa asa fell like Suri ke saman unki lo. Body se, effulgence se, they are very... And what do they look like? They look like small children, just five years of age. But they are older than Lord Shiva. So again, the appearance can be deceiving here. And people may mistake you know, these Chatur Kumaras to be just, you know, ignorant children, but they are the great exalted, you know, the best of the mystics in this material universe. And so, they appear. And then sometimes people in this current times, you know, we see, you know, they say, oh, if somebody has to come to our home, they should better inform us before. But in India, this, you know, in Sanatan Dharma, the concept is of Atithi, Atithi. Tithi means date, but who comes without any date, without any pre-announcement, is called Atithi. Or Atithi Bhagwan ka roop hota hai. Ye humare sanatan dharma, ye humare varnashram, you know, ashram jo hote hai, varna ashram, jo sanatan dharm ke hai, uske in the well-established principle hai. Ke jab bhi koi mehman aata hai, usse Bhagwan ka roop maana jata hai, uska adas sakat ke jata hai, agar humara shatru bhi aaye, so we welcome welcome karte hain usko proper sitting place dete hain usko acche tarah se honor karte hain so again as a interaction hota hai that we actually win over many of our enemies they say oh these people are very loving they are not crooked at all they are very open to their yet at the same time if the same person leaves afterwards and challenges us we you know do everything to you know uh, protect our honor so that is also very important. They should not consider us humble. Does not mean that we have become a doormat. Humble means that we are not filled with pride and we have a simple dealing. So Krishna consciousness similarly is very simple for simple minded, but very difficult for crooked minded. And so to establish life of Shuddha Bhakti in this chapter, we get amazing lessons, right? And Atithi is one, a mehman, 
जो कि बिना किसी डेट के आता है एंड इंटरेस्टिंगली अतिथि ऑल्सो मीन्स जो कि बिना किसी डेट के जाता है सो दे मे डिसाइड टू स्टे विथ हर्स फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम एंड वी शुड हैव अ वेरी लविंग वेरी रिस्पेक्टफुल इंटरेक्शन विथ हर गेस एंड वेन दे लीव इज अप टू देम टू डिसाइड इट्स नॉट दैट द होस सेस और दिस इज द टाइम यू शुड बेटर लीव नो दैट इज नेवर द ट्रेडिशन बट यस करेंट टाइम्स पीपल हैव बिकम लिटल माइजर एंड दे हैव फॉरगोटन दिस ग्रेट ट्रेडिशन you know that was always welcome and honored and lord krishna he gives amazing instructions that you know when prithu maharaj he sees he is actually he immediately gets up he is excited to welcome them right and so this is simple mindedness this is you know keeping the priorities in order and that's why devotees being simple minded they have simple single resolute and in bhagavad gita lord krishna reveals vyavasayatmika buddhi reke kuru nandana bahu shaka he anantascha buddhayo vyavasayinam those who are on this path are resolute in purpose and their aim is one what is that aim to you know serve lord shri krishna to engage in this loving devotional service pure devotional service to satisfy lord krishna who is also known as rishikesha the master of the senses and he is lord krishna reveals oh beloved child of the kurus guru nandana arjun the intelligence of those who are irresolute are many branched so people who have many different aims and this is the interesting you know illusion of maya in this material world of material energy she always gives you one aim after another so you know people are chasing mirage seeking sense gratification they put one goal and by the time they get one goal suddenly the goal has moved they have come up with another goal they have to achieve and then another goal and another goal and this is an unlimited cycle and before they realize time is gone and the death is at the door so please be careful of this trap of yoga maya which is like a mirage animals in the desert they chase the mirage of thinking that there is water but there is no water in this material world there is no place of happiness of pleasure because it is what are the two characteristics of this material world dukhalayam ashashvatam however just by taking to devotional service you can transcend the three modes of material nature and then you will be spiritually situated which simply starts with the chanting of the holy name हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे नाउ आई विल गिव यू अ जिस्ट ऑफ दिस चैप्टर एंड देन वील डाइव इन टू द सम अमेजिंग लेसन फ्रॉम दिस चैप्टर एंड देर अमेजिंग एनालॉजीज द शिवदेव गोस्वामी इज रिवीली एंड मैथ मुनी हेज शेयर विथ विदुर महाराज लाइक महात्मा विदुर एंड सो हेयर वट हैपन इज एज सुन एज Prithu Maharaj saw the four Kumaras. He got up. He welcomed them. He, you know, gave them proper seats, and he, you know, bathed their feet and then sprinkled the water. He worshipped them, and the Chanamrit, right? And after bathing the feet, the water becomes Chanamrit, and he sprinkled it on his head, just like Bali Maharaj after. you know washing the feet of vamadev he sprinkled on his head and on the heads of all his relatives and his associates so this is a proper way of welcoming a pure devotee and you know matya muni is revealing that when a pure devotee like this you know appears at our doorstep appears it is a great fortune and the person you know they bless becomes fortunate as well as the house becomes glorified so everything you know where great personalities appear and the bless becomes glorified and now prithu maharaj he is telling them so he is revealing some amazing uh, you know inquiries how we should be welcoming the guest he's well is welcoming them with very sweet words and uh, you know saying that it's very difficult to see you how is it that you have become so merciful that i am able to see you i must have performed great you know sacrifices have been very fortunate and yes that lord vishnu himself appeared and he said that you would be able to come and i would be able to get instructions from you so lord vishnu had already said that sanat kumar of the three of the four uh, 
you know, Kumaras would be giving instructions to Prithu Maharaj. Disciplic succession is revealed here. So Prithu Maharaj is appearing in the disciplic succession of the Kumar Sampradaya. And that has been revealed here as well. So it is very important that we follow one of the bona fide Sampradayas. If we want to attain perfection, because that is the path, this is the bona fide process. Tad vidhi prayupate na pari prashne na seveya obdekshyanti tajgyanam jnani nastatu dashna. So as per the process, what is the process? That one should take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master who appears in the disciplic succession and follows the associated rules and regulations. And following the instructions, again, we should be Nityam, again, we should be serving the spiritual master and submissively inquiring. So those two activities are on our shoulder as responsibility that we should serve our spiritual master and also inquire from our spiritual master in a humble mood, not in a challenging mood, so that they can reveal the truth to us. And why? how can they reveal the truth to us? Because they have seen the truth. Tattva Darshi. So they are, they have seen the truth. So here, Maharaj Prithu, he is inquiring from them that how can one attain perfection? How can one be happy? We all seek happiness. So he is inquiring. All these inquiries by Prithu Maharaj are on our behalf. And in this way, he is inquiring. So the Chatur Kumaras, they are really pleased. And at that time, Sanat Kumara, he actually glorifies uh, Prithu Maharaj first for his exalted behavior, for having satisfied. So again, previously we saw when Indra saw his spiritual master, he did not even get up from his seat. Forget about, you know, welcoming his spiritual master and giving a proper seat. And a whole series of tribulations followed. But here, whole series of blessings follow. Because Prithu Maharaj is getting blessed by the Chatur Kumar, by Sanat Kumar, who is revealing the exalted behavior of the king. And also, seeing that the king, he says that everything that belongs to me, I would like to offer it to you. So he is really impressed, right? In today's times, if a sannyasi comes to your home and you say, yes, my wealth, my bank accounts, my house, my cars, everything I offer to you, the, there is a fear in their heart, thinking that, oh, they will take away everything, you know? And this is because of the miserly mood. In reality, as is revealed later on, that actually all that, everything already belongs to the brahmanas. All of the, some, and again, the uh, ashram, people in different ashrams and different varnas, uh, they are, sannyas is an ashram and Brahman is a varna. So again, and uh, you know, Vaishya, Shudra and Kshatriya, they actually are holding, uh, holding, not holding, they are holding the, whatever they have earned as a savings account for the brahmanas so actually everything is already owned by the brahmanas as per the shastras as per the scriptures that has been revealed here and chila Prabhupada actually gives a beautiful purport in that regard that lord is version namo brahmanaya devaya so he is saying that for him you know as per this prayer the brahmanas are worshipable even by lord krishna which reminds me of a very nice incident once what happens is, uh, Lord Krishna, he brings Yashoda Mai, she would make various kind of, you know, food stuff for Lord Krishna. So he had a lot of laddus. And who liked laddus? Madhu Mangal likes, he likes laddus, right? So Bhagavan Krishna, so he, you know, as a Gwala boy, he is with Madhu Mangal and he gives laddu to Madhu Mangal. And Madhu Mangal is saying, Oh, Krishna, you are a Vaishnava because your father, Nanda Maharaj, is a Vaishnava. I am son of a Brahmana, so I am a Brahmana. So you should give me laddus and I will give you blessings. <laughs> and with the blessings of a Brahmana, as we know from the Shastra, we can get everything. So Lord Krishna, in this loving exchange, is showing us how he is giving more laddus to, you know, uh, Madhu Mangal. And Madhu Mangal is giving blessings in return. And of course, one blessing must be saying that, Krishna, you get more laddu so you can give them to me, right? <laughs> so here, in this particular chapter, amazing truths are being revealed. And so, when the, uh, you know, and Sanat Kumar, he is revealing that just by taking to devotional service, just by serving the devotees, just by engaging in, uh, you know, 
devotional service by engaging in shavanam kirtan vishnu smaranam one can attain perfection in this very life all anxieties can be removed and one can finish their business in this material world get rid of the true miseries janm mrityu jara vyadhi dukha doshanu dashanam so the four miseries of this material world are janm you know we have to take birth in this material world we have to accept a material body mrityu and everyone who accepts a material body has to die jara old age very painful vyadhi and when in disease state as we have seen during the pandemic people are very anxious not to get you know influenced by covid and so forth so again these are four kind of miseries how do you get rid of these four kind of miseries just by taking to devotional service we simply starts with the chanting of the holy name hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 rama hare rama 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 hare hare many times people ask why are you just chanting the name of the god actually it's a prayer and many of you know what the meaning of this prayer is so please write in the comment what is the meaning of this prayer hare krishna maha mantra so this way people who are not aware and thinking that people are just chanting the names of the lord they would be able to understand what is the prayer behind this chanting of hare krishna maha mantra so here after you know they have given the instructions prithu maharaj glorifies them as they are ready to depart and so आकाश मार्ग से आए थे आकाश मार्ग से ही वो वापस जाते हैं एंड दे बिकेम इनविजिबल सो द फोर कुमार ग्रेट सिद्ध पर्सनैलिटीज नाउ समटाइम्स पीपल ऑल्सो हैव दिस एंड थिंकिंग दैट ओ दे वर द इम्पर्सनलिस्ट नो एक्चुअली आफ्टर दिस मेल द तुलसी लीव्स एट द लोटस फीट ऑफ पद्मनाभ विष्णु राइट राइट आफ्टर दे कर्स द टू गेट कीपर्स जय एंड विजय राइट so at that time they transform the smell of tulsi from the lotus feet of padma vishnu you know reveal that's just by that they realize there was an instant transformation happened in them and they realize that actually the supreme absolute truth is a person right vadanti tatat yash tatvam yaj gyanam avyam brahmeti parmatmeti bhagwan iti shabdate so the learned transcendentalist who know the absolute truth understand the absolute truth in three forms brahman you know just like this from sun comes sunlight so again from lord krishna's body effulgence you know that is brahman the rays the light that comes parmatma so shri raksha vishnu he expands in this material universe he is present in every atom at the heart, in the heart of every living entity so that is parmatma and bhagwan lord shri krishna He is the supreme, original supreme personality of Godhead, from whom comes various swamshas and vibhinamshas. We living entities are vibhinamshas, and the swamshas are Vishnu tatvas. Just like from Lord Krishna comes Balram, from Balrams come Vasudev, Sankarshan, Pradyumna, and Aniruddha, and so forth. You know, Vishnu Maha uh, Purushottas come and so forth. So again, all these material universes are being maintained according to. the lord's desire and of course swamsha means when lord krishna he never steps out of vrindavan yet at the same time he is present everywhere in his swamsha incarnations and his vishnu tatva incarnations and all the affairs are being taken care of properly once shila prabhupad he said that you know it was very interesting that today we were on a call and someone said Oh, it would be very interesting that we devotees are glorifying the Lord, so He may be He is constantly dancing in the spiritual world. Maybe He will be stopping to dance and then looking to see. Oh, these devotees are talking about me, and that was you know it made us laugh because again, Shila Prabhupada said when he looked at the deities, he said that deities Radha Rani and Lord Krishna are in, always in the dancing pose. The moment the dancing stops, everything is finished. So the dancing, the rasa. you know in the spiritual world never stops yeah but yet lord krishna he is there as well as he is everywhere he is in the heart of every living entity so just sometimes thinking of devotees that he would have stopped his rasa dance to hear and you know meditate on what the devotees are singing or uh, glorifying about him yes as his expansion swamsa expansion as vishnu tatva you know he would do that but his dancing would never stop we have we have to make this we have to go deeper into this understanding 
and that is being revealed by the acharyas again so Srila Prabhupada says that no that dancing never stops sometimes the devotees have this thinking so here I shared you with the gist of this particular chapter as how the four Kumaras came Prithu Maharaj who was being glorified was so humble he immediately got up he worshipped the four Kumaras welcomed them gave them proper sitting washed their feet sprinkled the water on his head and you know made proper prayers that how can we attain perfection in this life how can we be free of all anxieties how can we become stress-free and how can we attain transcendental happiness transcendental bliss ananda bhaya abhyasat we all are seeking happiness that is the fact and how do we get it we get it when we you know engage in devotional service and satisfy the supreme personality of god when we please the lord as a loving father he pleases us by showering his mercy right prasad and i know that some of you may be getting hungry thinking of prasad because prasad is which means mercy sometimes also is thought of as uh, food stuff that people eat yet after having offered bhoga it becomes prasad maha prasad and devotees they share you know and they partake the prasad so yes here we hear from this behavior of prithu maharaj so whatever action is performed by a great man and prithu maharaj he was the ruler of this planet earth not just a great devotee but a ruler of the planet earth a very powerful personality right so if he sets this example of course his the citizens would follow you know they would see how he is getting blessed and they would want to be blessed like him so following his instructions they would carry out their duties very nicely so when a great person performs an action common man follow his in his footsteps and whatever standards the person sets by his or her exemplary acts all the world pursues this is a very important lesson and so everyone has a responsibility instead of pointing out asking others to correct their action they should be trying to improve their behavior it we all have this responsibility on our shoulder we are all accountable for our actions so we should be carrying out our actions so that people get inspired to take to devotional service people get inspired to be honest people get inspired to be simple simply simple living higher thinking not higher living simply thinking so again we should be very very careful not to go in the wrong direction right because we may be rising on the ladder of success just to realize when we reach the top which is the end of the life you know we actually are on the opposite side of the uh, true ladder of success which is devotional service pure devotional service which is the giver of krishna prema the goal of our life so Again, when Prithu Maharaj, he made the four Kumaras sit on a golden throne. So these four Kumaras, they were appearing just like boys, but their body was, you know, with this effulgence. And on top of that, he made them, he honored them by making them sit on a golden throne. They appeared just like fire blazing on an altar. Such a beautiful sight that they were like, you know, so the gold was also reflecting the on the throne was reflecting the rays that was coming out from the bodies and again these chaturkumaras are great devotees of the lord they are the greatest of the mystic yogis because initially they were impersonalist but we should not think that an impersonalist cannot become personalist with lord's mercy you know and the devotee's mercy mercy always flows to the devotee of the lord one can go to that next level and cross this impersonalistic you know mindset just like chaitanya mahaprabhu he made many impersonalist personalist we have so many stories regarding those so it is also very important so the they appeared these four you know in a boy young child like uh, bodies five-year-old bodies these great personalities who are older than Lord Shiva, the greatest of all the mystic yogis, were appearing just like fire blazing on an altar. So how beautiful that is. And Prithu Maharaj in his inquiries, 
he's welcoming them, he's glorifying them that although you're traveling in all planetary systems, people cannot know you, right? Just as they cannot know the super soul. Now, this is also very important analogy because super soul is in every in the heart of every living entity. But we cannot see him, right? Unless he reveals himself to us. So it is known, yet at the same time, there is no microscope out there that can see the super soul in the heart of any living entity. Forget about human beings, even the smallest to smallest, uh, you know, and he's present even in the spaces between the atoms, not just in every atom. Even Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva cannot understand the super soul. So again, when Lord Brahma and Lord Shiva cannot understand the super soul, how can we understand? Srila Prabhupada gives in this particular aspect very important lesson that we don't have to understand Lord Krishna, just like we don't try to understand our father, right? What is his qualification and how much he knows, how much he doesn't know. No, that's not our business. We just love our father. So similarly, we just love Lord Krishna. And just like children are always anxious to hear about the various activities their father was engaged in, they get excited to hear so many you know, wonderful, because the fathers are generally the role model for the boys and girls are very affectionate to their fathers as well. They want to take care of their father just like it, they, because that's the tender, loving, care attitude of, you know, daughters or wives or mothers. They always want to take care of their sons, brothers, uh, fathers and, you know, relatives. So that is the mood. So we just love, the devotees just love Lord Shri Krishna. And so we are always eager to hear. Kirtana Deva Krishna Sya Mukta Sangha Param Vajit. And just by hearing about Lord Shri Krishna, we can become Mukta from this Sangha, which is the association of the three modes of material nature. So we can, you know, free ourselves from this binding of the three modes of material nature, Param Vajit, and attain the supreme abode, go back home, back to Godhead. Yet the focus is not going back home, back to Godhead, but to engage in devotional service because you can be in this world, but we are not of this world. We can be spiritually situated now and here simply by taking to the chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So Matthew Muni is revealing that a person who's at, at whose doorstep or in the house where pure devotees come, they appear, then, of course, the house becomes glorious and the person, everyone who's living in that household becomes fortunate. So similarly, when we welcome Srimad Bhagavatam, when we welcome Bhagavad Gita in our home, all these personalities are appearing on the pages of this, right? Lord Krishna himself, he spoke Bhagavad Gita. He's appearing on these pages of Bhagavad Gita as it is. So we are welcoming him in our house, in our hearts, in our life and engaging all our activities driven by mind, body and words. Those are the three ways we can perform activities. All our activities for his pleasure. When we invite Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimad Bhagavatam is also said to be literary incarnation of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Shri Krishna. So again, we are inviting the Lord Shri. And Srila Prabhupada, when he is, you know, in the first canto, he writes in the purport that we are actually in a lecture, he said, that we are very grateful that Devushi Narada appeared on the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. And he is a pure devotee of the Lord. So again, great exalted personalities we can welcome in our home just by inviting Srimad Bhagavatam. We can invite Prithu Maharaj, Chatur Kumaras, Matya Muni, Mahatma Vidu, all these great personalities who are appearing on the pages of Srimad Bhagavatam. We welcome them in our home, put them on a golden throne and read them. So again, worshipping by intelligence is when we read these scriptures. Yesterday, we did the complete recitation of Bhagavad Gita in Hindi translations. And here, there, in the 18th chapter, we again read, and time and again, we keep reading it to remind ourselves that the Lord himself says that whoever reads this conversation between, you know, Lord Krishna, Lord Vasudeva Krishna, and Arjun is actually worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Lord Shri Krishna, by one's intelligence. So such a place is very fortunate, is again auspicious and becomes fortunate. However, on the contrary, even full of all opulence and materialistic prosperity, 
Any householder's house where the devotees of the Lord are never allowed to come in and where there is no water for washing their feet is to be considered a tree in which all venomous serpents live. So again, that is also, it can be taken in two different ways. So a person may be very, uh, you know, rebellious not to allow any devotee to enter the house. So such a household is very unfortunate. It is like a tree filled with all venomous serpents. So you can imagine, nobody wants to be near this tree, right? No sane person wants to be near this tree. Only mad people would be, you know, living there as well as visiting that tree. So we have to be very, very careful in our lives. We should be welcoming the great personalities and simple ways by, you know, having Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, Chaitanya Chaitanya in our house and read them regularly. That's the mode, that, that's the purpose. And Chila Prabhupada, the pure devotee of the Lord himself has written his, you know, transcendental purpose in Bhagavad Gita as it is and Srimad Bhagavatam that we can get this knowledge and understand the true meaning of each of the verses so that we can live a life of devotion. We can, you know, live a life of Shuddha Bhakti and attain perfection in this very lifetime. So that is also very important. And then comes another analogy where it is revealed that when upon fixing in the attachment to the Supreme Personality of Godhead by the grace of the spiritual master, so the spiritual master is a representative of the Supreme Lord. So he is to be worshipped like Supreme Lord. He is a, an ambassador. And by awakening the knowledge and detachment, which, is, which are the two uh, products of devotional service, pure devotional service, the living entity situated within the heart of the body. So we living entity, jivas, jivera surpure kishnaya nitidas, our true nature is to be an eternal summit of Lord Shri Krishna. And the jiva is present in the heart of this body, right next to the super soul, who is also present in the heart of this body. And covered by the five elements. So earth, water, fire, air, ether. Now why did I raise different figures? Because when we say something solid, that's earth. When kids raise their finger, that's like going for a leak. That represents water actually. And this finger is fiery finger. Every time somebody wants to blame someone, this finger rises, so that's fire, right? And then this is said to be the representation of earth. So when we put a tilak, we actually pick it up with this finger and then place it on someone's forehead and then use the thumb in case of male to spread it you know, as tilak, proper tilak uh, ceremony. And then the largest is ether, the sky, and the largest finger represents the sky. So that's why all five elements are also represented using the five fingers or four fingers and a thumb, you, some, someone could say. So here that has been revealed. So again, all covered by these five elements, the living entity burns up his material surrounding exactly as fire, arising from wood which burns the wood itself. And we revealed when Devashi Nara's pastimes again earlier, that he, when he was engaging in devotional service, even though in the body of a young boy, a son of a maid servant, his limbs had become spiritualized. So it is not that we have to wait for this, to give up this body, but rather we can make our life spiritualized, we can make our body spiritualized just by engaging in devotional service, by becoming fixed in our attachment, our sakti, right, to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So again, we have to just take to this process and for that, we have to make sure that we are singing the prayers. And it, this is also the interesting thing, that when we do the chanting of Hare Krishna Mahamanta, it's devotional service in itself. So we should always be engaged in devotional service. So yes, we should constantly be incessantly chanting Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. And so similarly, when we engage in devotional service, devotional service being transcendental to the three modes of material nature, we become transcendental to the three modes of material nature. During the period we are engaged in devotional service for the pleasure of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, not keeping any attachment for ourselves, but rather to seek complete satisfaction of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, then we become transcendental. 
And that is the way to live this life full of bliss. Now there is also very interesting analogy where in the 29th verse it is revealed that because of you know different causes a person sees a difference between himself and others right so you know a person in rajasic mode they, pers- they differentiate because of the mode of passion influence of the mode of passion the differentiate between them bo- their body and others bodies and the different kind of living entities because they are thinking that the reflection of a body you know it's appearing differently as just like you know the reflection on the water is manifesting differently or on oil or in a mirror so just like you know on water if there are ripples you cannot see things very clearly and you misinterpret the shape whatever that you are seeing and in oil similar thing happens because it takes a different twist and in mirror it completely depends on the surface of the mirror right we have seen those mirrors sometimes in the circus or other places where you go and look at your body and sometimes you look very fast sometimes you look very tall and so we should be able to understand that this is because of the influence the limbs that we have received are also coming from the material energy and they means all our uh, you know senses should be engaged in the service of the master of the senses so that is the true way and not to seek sense gratification so here we are seeing that just by taking to devotion service we can attain perfection in this very life and sanat kumar he is revealing to prithu maharaj that just by taking to the devotion service engaging in the service of the lotus feet toes of the lotus feet of the lord one can very easily overcome hard knotted desires for fruitive activities right guna also means rope and you know there are hard knots for the fruity activities people want to immediately it's very interesting in the beginning itself you know prithu maharaj when he saw the kumaras there was an analogy used in this chapter that as soon as he saw he became you know immediately engaged to welcome them just like the senses when they are inspired in, under the influence of the three modes of material energy engage in different kind of fruity activities so similarly he was you know but he was not from a fruitive activities perspective it was showing that the attraction of material energy is so strong is being revealed and sometimes people say oh yes so we are attracted by material energy so material energy is keeping us bound well there is also an example acharya has revealed that a man he is holding on to a tree and asking please leave me please leave me or tree please leave me actually material energy is jada it is non moving it is we who have these desires and these desires are coming of this fruitive desires for sense gratification and we become das of this material energy rather we should be the swami right we should not be the and to become swami of the material energy we have to become das of lord krishna so again we have to become das of our spiritual master that is the true mood we should be having just by serving you know the the lotus feet of lord shri krishna we can easily overcome the material energy devi he sha gunamai mama maya duratyaya mame vie prapadyante maya me tam tarantite so lord krishna reveals this secret in bhagavad gita devi he sha gunamai so this material energy of mind lord krishna is revealing is made up of three modes of material nature mode of goodness you know shuddha sattva sattva guna then mode of passion rajoguna mode of ignorance tamoguna mama maya duratya my energy of mind is very difficult to overcome however he gives the secret how you can overcome in the next line ma me ye prapadyante but those who surrender unto me maya me tam tarantite can very easily cross over this material energy so because it is very difficult the non devotees the gyanis and yogis although trying to stop the waves of sense gratification cannot do so and therefore you know sanat kumar is advising that to engage in devotional service of krishna the son of vasudev and yes on tuesday there is gita jayanti bhagavad gita was spoken by lord shri krishna to arjun so we should understand this and not be engaged you know just in the gyan but also 
in realization, in practicing what we hear, by what we understand, so that our life becomes blissful. Knowing that our life can become blissful is good, but making the life blissful by doing what we have learned is better. And best is to constantly engage in devotional service. It simply starts with the chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So here, it is said that Jnanis and Yogis, they cannot understand the Lord, right? And Krishna Bhakta Nishkama Ateva Shanta, Krishna Bhakta, a devotee of Lord Krishna, a Vaishnava, is, you know, performing activities. Nish, nishkama means, it's not doesn't mean that not having any desire, not having any desire for sense gratification. That's what it actually means, Nishkama. But rather their desires, we cannot be desireless. We living entities are active by nature, we are conscious by nature, so we are always having desire. But we have to dovetail these desires instead of, desire, you know, for the gratification of material energy with, from whom we receive these senses, we have to direct it towards Krishna, you know. And so, in the directing our desires to please Lord Shri Krishna, Ateva Shanta, we become peaceful. And this peacefulness is also being identified in the fifth chapter of Bhagavad Gita, which is known as Peace Formula. Bhoktaram yagatapasam sarva lok maheshwaram suhidam sarva bhutanam gyatva maam shantim richati. Bhoktaram yagatapasam. Lord Krishna says that I am the supreme proprietor of all the material and spiritual universes, all that can be. Sarvalok Mahesh, Bhoktaram Yagatapasam Sarvalok Maheshwaram. So Sarvalok Maheshwaram is the supreme proprietor of all material and spiritual universes. And he's the beneficiary. Bhoktaram Yagatapasam means he's the beneficiary of all sacrifices that we perform. And supreme proprietor is Sarvalok Maheshwaram. Suhidam Sarva Bhutana. And he's the best friend, he's the well wisher, he's the benefactor of all living entities. Not just of human beings, but also of birds, beasts you know, aquatics, trees, hills, mountains, yes, they are also living entities. So because the devotees, again, mam shantim, so again, one becomes peaceful. So peace formula is that we have to understand Lord's position and so engage in devotional service and then we'll become peaceful. However, on the other side, bhukti mukti siddhi kami sakaliya shanta. So Kami means whoever is desiring for sense gratification through bhukti, you know, seeking sense gratification by carrying out as a, you know, thinking themselves to be karma yogi, but not actually as karmi. They are doing, engaging various hard endeavors to acquire, to hold wealth, to acquire things so that they can enjoy their senses. So that is, you know, that Kami, that kind of Kami is also Ashanta. Mukti, one who is seeking liberation of Sayujya, merging into Brahman. And because, you know, happiness comes from relationship. Because there, you cannot serve the Lord, you cannot establish that relationship just by merging into Brahman, which is a great offense, as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu reveals, that one, you know, Mayavadis, they think that by merging into Brahman, they will become God, which is a great offense. So again, that kind of Mukti is also causing, uh, you know, no peace, ashanta, that's a very disturbing, anxious state. And siddhi, you know, people want to acquire different kind of mystic powers. So the Chaturkumaras, they had acquired these mystic powers, but then they used these mystic powers to see Lord Vishnu, Padvana Vishnu. It's because they got attracted by the smell of Tulsi from coming from the lotus feet of Lord Vishnu. So in this way, they entered Vakunta planet. So they went through the sixth gate and the seventh gate, they were stopped by the two doorkeepers. And now there was a reason why they were stopped by the two doorkeepers because they were impersonalist. They could not enter into the abode un as impersonalists. So when Lord Padmanabh Vishnu came to the door, they were satisfied to see the Lord and they returned back. But at the same time, they turned, they were completely transformed into pure devotees of the Lord. They understood the Lord in his supreme personal feature. So again, that's realization, that realization is very important. If you don't have that realization and you're just looking for various kind of siddhis, then you will also be anxious constantly. However, that anxiety can be resolved just by taking to devotional service. 
This simply starts with the chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Now, there is a beautiful analogy given that the ocean of nations, this material world, which is our very very difficult to cross. Why? Because it is infested with many dangerous sharks. Although those who are non-devotees undergo severe austerities just like, and penances to cross that ocean, we recommend that you simply take the shelter of lo- the lotus feet of the Lord, which are like boats for crossing the ocean. Although the ocean is difficult to cross, by taking shelter of his lotus feet, you will overcome all dangers. Now, Sanat Kumara has revealed a great secret right here. So we are all, you know, people engage in devotional service, chanting of the holy name. We are on this Sankirtan Yajna boat, which is the lotus feet of the Lord. And so this boat is very easy way to cross over the ocean. And what others are doing, some people are just trying to think, oh, how can we make a build, you know, build something to go across. Maybe we just stand over here on one side and, you know, we'll not be in the ocean. Or maybe we'll just, you know, keep ourselves afloat. That's not the solution. And then the yogis are doing various kind of exercises to swim across. But then this ocean is very difficult to swim across. So they are bound to, again, sink, sink down. So again, we are on this boat and the boats are, this boat is the lotus feet of Lord Shri Krishna and all you have to do is get a ticket to this boat, right? When you go on a cruise, you may be crossing a great ocean, but the cruise is making it so pleasurable. Everyone on the cruise is actually engaged in singing, you know, dancing and having feasts, right? And Srila Prabhupada reveals that actually we have a perfect recreational program in Krishna consciousness. All we have to do is do bhajan all day, right? Chanting, singing all day. Then we do, uh, you know, uh, take Krishna Prasad, which is feasting. And finally, we engage, you know, uh, in dancing. Uh, Of course, when you are happy, you're constantly dancing. So again, it keeps your body healthy as well as you please the Lord with your dancing, not for sense gratification, but for the pleasure of the master of the senses, Lord Rishikesha. And so here they they have revealed this, that we should, people who are intelligent in this Kali age, Sumedasa, they will take to this devotional process, the devotional service, Bhakti Yoga, and engage in pleasing and satisfying the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now, in the response with King Parikshit, the king, he actually gives some very interesting comparison. He is saying that, my dear Brahmanas, my life, wife, children, home, furniture and household paraphernalia, my kingdom, strength, land and especially my treasury are all offered unto you. So here, Prithu Maharaj is offering everything. And then Parikshit Maharaj, after he was cursed by the Brahman boy Shringi, you know, the son of Shamika Rishi, he gave up his kingdom and he came to fast for seven days and Shukdev Goswami appeared. So sometimes people look at this contrast. Parikshin Maharaj left everything and he came, you know, because he had performed a wrong. So it was not that he has to give away all his kingdom. It has to carry out the process as his, uh, you know, as a ruler, he has to pass it on to the next person who is responsible, and then he left. And sometimes I have seen people criticizing that, so, oh, he left all the you know wealth there, and he has come and joined our ashram. The important thing is that he joined the ashram. That is the example set by Parikshit Maharaj. And Prithu Maharaj is actually offering whatever he has to the Chatur Kumaras. So again, because they are all offered unto the Brahmanas. And in the purport, and also Prithu Maharaj is revealing that whatever, you know, it is only the Brahmanas who give their own king, uh, what they own, who in charity, who uh, offer in sacrifice what they really own, and who take, you know, eat and, you know, sustain on what they really own. Now, people get confused when they hear this. So, Srila Prabhupada, he identifies 
that when Parikshit Maharaj is saying that the Kshatriyas, Vaishya and Shudras eat their food by virtue of the Brahmana's mercy. So even the food to sustain the body is coming to all the other Varnas because of Brahmana, Brahmana's mercy. And it is the Brahmana who enjoy their own property, clothe themselves with their own property and give charity with their own property. So this sometimes is very bewildering because People are thinking that, oh, we are doing all these activities and whatever we are getting is actually meant for us. But Srila Prabhupada in the purple reveals, Namo Brahmanaya Devaya, when we worship, when we offer, you know, for stuffs to Lord Krishna, this is a common verse. Namo Brahmanaya Devaya, Go Brahmanaya Hitaya Cha, Jagad Hitaya Krishnaya, Go Vindaya Namo Namaha. So Namo Brahmanaya Devaya indicates that the Supreme Lord accepts the Brahmanas as worshipable gods. Even Lord Krishna reveals, like the Madhu Mangal and Lord Krishna's, uh, you know, loving exchange we discussed earlier. So he is accepting the Brahmanas as worshipable gods. Everything belongs to the Brahmanas, but the Kshatriya government and the mercantile people keep everything in custody like bankers. And whenever the Brahmanas need money, the Kshatriyas and Vaishyas should supply it. Actually, the Brahmanas or Vaishyas do not live at others' cost. They live by spending their own money, although it appears that they are collecting this money from others. Kshatriyas and Vaishnavas have no right to give charity for whatever they possess belongs to the Brahmanas. That's why any charity that is being performed by any rich person should be under the instructions of a Brahmana. Because actually that money, whatever the wealth that they are giving in charity, belongs to Brahmanas. And again, bona fide brahmanas is also very important to say because there are many kind of brahmanas today we see who can't even give up, you know, basic intoxicants for to talk about following the four regulative principles. So brahmana is one who has, you know, is always engaged. Shamo damash tapa shocham shantim arjuma mevacha gyanam vigyanam astikam the karma saying these are performed by the brahmanas. So again, a Brahmana is very tolerant, the Brahmana is very patient and always engaged in devotional service. A uh, Vaishnava is automatically a Brahmana and is uh, constantly engaged in educating others and a Brahmana never charges any fees for educating others. That is also very important because they know that everything that others have, the administrators and the mercantile people, the traders or the merchants have, that is actually belonging to the Brahmanas and they should be able to ask whatever they need for their sustenance. There is beautiful example that comes from, uh, you know, from in the history of Chanakya Pandit. Even though he was a Brahmana, the Prime Minister of Chandragupta Maurya and the spiritual master of Chandragupta Maurya, he never lived in the palace. Even though Chandragupta Maurya offered him he stayed in his hut and he would come and he gives his ruling. He never withdrew any salary for his services as Prime Minister of the King. And once Chandragupta Maurya asked him to give an explanation of his, for his action. He says, I quit if I have to give an explanation. So again, that, are the, that is the quality of a Brahmana. He is Chand, uh, here Chanakya Pandit is showing us as a role model Brahmana how a Brahmana lives very simply you know, with basic needs. You know, sometimes we see even, you know, a Brahmana trying to live in a very opulent state and engaging all kinds of sense gratification. Can't manage those four regulatory principles, no intoxication, no meat eating, no illicit sex, no gambling. So these four regulatory principles are actually sinful activities. First come to zero point. Then by coming to zero point, you can take on to the next level of chanting the holy name. So, but it doesn't mean that you cannot chant unless you have given up these. Actually, chanting is so powerful that in any state of mind, in any condition of life, you can take to the chanting of the holy name and become happy and blissful and can make spiritual progress. And automatically these four bad things, intoxication, gambling, illicit sex, and uh, meditating will go away because of the influence of associating with Lord Shri Krishna because Abhinnatum Nam Namina, Lord Krishna himself and his name are non-different. So again, we have to be conscious and not perform any aparad, no uh, 
and because of, of it, their ignorance as well as and arthas you know unwanted things these three things we should avoid when we are taking to the chanting of holy name so maharaj Prithu was very opulent due to the prosperity of his entire empire but he never had to give up his household sometimes people say and i was reading the miracle on uh, second avenue and uh, Mukund Maharaj in that book, right after they were married, when Mukund Maharaj was uh, Michael Grant, you know, in his previous life, and uh, you know, uh, Yamuna Mataji's elder sister, Jen, so they were married by Srila Prabhupada, and after a few days, his wife, uh, Janaki Mataji, she went to Srila Prabhupada and had this inquiry that, you know, based on what I have heard from a lecture, Will my husband, Mukund, he would have to give up, you know, his name is Mukund Maharaj, at that time was householder, he will have to take to sannyas. And Srila Prabhupada just laughed and he said, yes, he will have to do that. So again, at that time she was bewildered. But then, if husband and wife are engaged in devotional service, they don't have to take to any other ashram, because ashram means a shelter, right? Yet at the same time, yes, Varnashram Dharma talks about the four different stages. But if the husband and wife are together engaged 24 by 7 in devotional service, then they have actually already come to the renounced order of life, right? Which is Tyag. They have already given up all sense gratification and always engaging in devotional service. So Maharaj Prithu, he is showing by his example, he never had to leave his house. He remained a householder. And he was never inclined to utilize any of his opulences for sense gratification. He remained always detached from, you know, the sense objects, just like sun, which is unaffected in all circumstances. And Maharaj Prithu, in this way, you know, was celebrated. Now his celebration, his how is he celebrated is being glorified by Maitre Muni, one of the Adityas, the descendants of uh, Aditi. So again, he is glorifying. So Ishmatriya is glorifying. He was celebrated as a king, king as Somraj. Somraj is king of moon. And so he, because of uh, moon, all the vegetables have taste, right? And the various nutrients. So similarly, Maharaj Prithu, with his ruling, he is making sure all the citizens have all the necessities of their life to sustain themselves and further encourage them to engage in devotional service. And he was also powerful and exacting, just like the sun god. You know, so sun god, he uses the heat and light to spread, to make sure that everyone can see as things are, right? When the sun comes out, then we can see, you know, what's around us. Otherwise, in the absence of sun, when there is no light, we can't even see our hands and legs, forget about things around us. So he was making things visible uh, to see how one should lead their life, yet he was exacting, you know, the taxes, just like sun extracts all the planetary waters because of the sun rays. So Prithu Maharaj was also, is also glorified to be as strong and powerful so that nobody could disobey his orders. Rather, he was such a, you know, perfect ruler that people would, uh, you know, automatically carry out his orders willingly, understanding that it's for their own benefit. And, and this disobedience was never there, just like one cannot conquer fire. So that has also been identified. And he was in his strength being compared to as strong as Indra. You know, Indra has this Vajra because of which he can destroy the mountain tops. Yet, you know, Prithu Maharaj, he was also as tolerant as earth. And earth is so tolerant that if you fall, you know, you fall on earth. So the mother, earth is said to be a mother, which immediately embraces you. And he would fulfill various desires of human society. So Prithu Maharaj was like heaven itself for all the citizens on this planet. And this planet was just like heaven. And so once Srila Prabhupada was asked by one of the devotees after Srimad Bhavitam class, how can this planet Earth become vacuanta? Srila Prabhupada said, only 2%. If 2% people can become Krishna conscious, then this planet Earth would become vacuanta. 
So again, that is a great opportunity. If we become Krishna conscious, our house becomes Vaikuntha. And if the population, 2%, just 2% of population becomes Krishna conscious, then the whole planet Earth can become Vaikuntha. Vaikuntha, a place there is no misery. Kuntha means misery, anxiety, and devoid of that is Vaikuntha. So Vaikuntha, devoid of any misery or anxiety is Vaikuntha. So a place of complete happiness, transcendental bliss. And it is also, Prithu Maharaj's glory is being identified in this chapter. And why do we glorify great personalities? Somebody could say, why we continue to glorify great personalities? Yes, in the Shastras it is revealed that when we glorify great personalities, we get, we partake, you know, we get the blessings so that we get those potencies in our lives to be able to act like them and get some of those abilities, right? So we get empowered, that's why we are glorifying. So just as rainfall satisfies one's desires, Prithu Maharaj used to satisfy everyone based on the time, place and circumstances, yes. He was like the sea in that no one could understand its depth. And he was like Meru, the king of hills, in the fixity of his purpose. So again, you know, Meru, uh, Parvat, it's very difficult to move it. It's really strong, fixed in its place. While at the same time, sea is very deep. Once Srila Prabhupada, he was walking on the beach and the devotees were walking with him. He says, do you, do you see the Pacific Ocean? And in Hindi, we call Pacific Oceans Prashant Mahasagar. Prashant means, which is shant hai, right? Shant is some, but it's very, very quiet. So on the surface, Pacific Ocean appears very calm. So the devotees, they were like uh, giving different reasons, but then Srila Prabhupada reveals to them the true answer. He says, because it is deep. So we have to develop that depth in our own personality. You know, see, stay with simple dealings and simple life, yet at the same time by reading scriptures, by reading the writings and instructions given by the Acharyas in Disciplic Succession, we can develop this depth so that we can understand the purpose and not stay, be deviated at any time, just like the Mount Meru stays fixed on its purpose. So similarly, and our purpose is to attain Krishna Prema. So that should be the single-minded purpose we should have to please the Supreme Personality of Godhead, which can be attained by through three ways. Namaruchi, Again, three elements. These are the three pillars. Namaruchi, Jivadaya, Vaishnava Seva. So all these three are important, starting with the chanting of the holy name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Maharaj Prithu's intelligence education was exactly like that of Yamraj. So Yamraj has to deal with various complex matters. So of course, he needs to have a lot of education and intelligence, right? The superintendent of that. So Maharaj Pithu's intelligence is compared with that of Yamraj. And his opulence was compared to the Himalaya mountains. So Himalaya mountains where all valuable jewels and metals are stocked. So that is how opulent Maharaj Prithu was. And he possessed great riches like Kuvera, the treasure of the heavenly planets. So the treasure of the demigods, Kuvera is very rich. So again, that, such was the riches of Prithu Maharaj. And no one could reveal his secret, for they were like the demigod Varuns. And demigod Varun, he is, lives in the ocean, so he is the demigod of the waters. And it's very difficult to know the secrets of the ocean. So similarly, the secrets of Maharaj Prithu were not known to anyone. Now, his bodily strength and the strength of his senses, Maharaj Prithu was as strong as the wind, which can go anywhere and everywhere. So wind, you cannot stop the wind, you, you know, it can easily travel. As far as his intolerance was concerned, he was just like the all-powerful Rudra, expansion of Lord Shiva or Sadashiva. So again, Shiva means he is all auspicious. Uh, he is also known as Ashutosh, one who is very easily pleased. But Lord Shiva can also be very easily displeased. And so, in intolerance, if somebody disobeys the order, he was as in intolerant as Rudra expansion of Lord Shiva. Rudra means the angry form, where he opened his third eye and killed the Cupid. So that is the comparison 
given for the intolerance of Maharaj Prithu. Yes, it is said that one should be tolerant, that's for the Brahmanas. But if somebody disobeys the order, a correct order, a rightful order, and does not follow the law, then the administrator has to be very strong and, you know, ready to punish. In his bodily beauty, he was like Cupid. So this is glorifying the beauty. Yes, in the sacrificial arena earlier, it was glorified that how wonderful his form is, as how he has the three marks on his stomach, you know, the people say six packs and all that. But he had such a powerful, wonderful body, perfectly, uh, you know, like that of Cupid. And his thoughtfulness, he was like a lion. And in his affection, he was like Swayambhuva Manu. Swayambhuva Manu wrote Manu Samhita. For, so that we, you know, Manushya, we are descendants of Swayambhuva Manu, can follow the direction he gives in Manu Samhita. And then sometimes people misinterpret that, right? They say, oh, Manu Samhita says if somebody has murdered someone, then they should be hanged or they should be given capital punishment. Well, too many times it has been proven that the capital punishment was given to the wrong person, to an innocent person. That's why it is not right to take this particular instruction or injunction from Manu Samhita and apply it. Because, yes, the scripture is perfect, but the application of it is imperfect. And in current times, people use these to sometimes get rid of their enemies. And, you know, and people, the general populace being innocent, get bewildered. And when the truth is revealed, it's already too late because an innocent person has been killed in the process. And that sin is shared by all people. The person who gave the judgment, person who supported it, people who, you know, agreed at that time, all of them. It's not that it's divided. They get the sin of killing a person. You know, that is Janahatya, which is very gruesome, you know. And if the hap, you know, God forbid, if the person happens to be a Brahmana, then it becomes Brahmahatya. Brahmahatya, which is even a greater offense. And people have to go through many tribulations in the present life as well as after life. So it's very dangerous situation. So we have to understand the application has to be done properly. And Prithu Maharaj's glory is continuing in his personal behavior. Prithu Maharaj experienced all good qualities and his spiritual knowledge. He was exactly like Brahaspati, the spiritual master of the demigods. In self-control, he was like the supreme personality of God and himself. You can imagine how much self-control Supreme Personality of God must be having when he's seeing all the demons doing all these activities and he's present in their hearts seeing them. How much tolerance that requires. I don't think any of the human beings or any of the jivas can be so tolerant. So as far as his devotion service was concerned, he was a great follower of devotees who were attached to cow protection and rendering of all service to the spiritual master and the brahmanas. So Sadhu Guru and Shasta are not just our three references, but they are the shelter. We actually worship them. And he was perfect in his shyness and his gentle behavior. And when he engaged in some philanthropic activity, he worked as if he were working for his own personal self. So again, under the instructions of his spiritual master and the Brahmanas. So throughout the universe, in the higher, lower and middle planetary system, Prithu Maharaj's reputation was loudly declared and all ladies and saintly persons heard his glories, which were as sweet as the glories of Lord Ramchandra. Now here, Srila Prabhupada in the purple reveals that here, you know, ladies and saintly persons have been identified. So ladies want to hear about great personalities. And Prithu Maharaj was, he was such a great personality that even all over the planet, in the higher planet systems, lower planet systems, all other planet systems in this particular universe, the ladies of those planets were eager to hear about the glories of Prithu Maharaj. So such were his exalted personalities. And at the same time, the, his glories were heard all over the universe by the devotees, by the Vaishnavas, and by the saintly persons, because they were as pleasing as Lord Ramchandra's glories. And Yes, Lord Ramchandra's kingdom is still existing, you know, in the heavenly planets, again, in the spiritual planets. And recently, again, during the time when Srila Prabhupada was writing this particular chapter, he refers that there was a party in India called Nam, uh, Ram Raj party. 
you know, and the purpose of this party they establish is they want to establish a kingdom resembling the kingdom of Lord Ramchandra. You know, in Lord Ramchandra's uh, times, his kingdom, nobody had to put locks on the door. There were no thieves or rogues. Everyone was very happy and very open. And, you know, everyone was performing their duties. Everyone was carrying it out uh, perfectly. So everything was very nicely arranged. Unfortunately, this political party, you know, they established the Ram Raj, means they were thinking of establishing Ram Raj, but they wanted to establish a kingdom resembling kingdom of Lord Ram without Lord Ram Chandra, right? The ideal king. So here, the modern politicians, they want the kingdom of Ram, right? Ram Raj without Lord Ram. How is that possible? Although they were banished, once again, they banished the idea of God consciousness, they still expected to have a, you know, replication. So this is a demonic behavior to trying to become equal to the Lord by saying that, oh, Ram Rajya, Lord Ram Nekarata, we have so much power that we can establish a similar scenario. Such a proposal is rejected by devotees. Prithu Maharaj's reputation was heard by saintly persons because he exactly represented Lord Ram Chandra, the ideal king. This is where the chapter ends. And my dear devotees, in this chapter, we heard so many wonderful lessons as how we can make this life blissful. We can uh, get rid of all kind of anxieties and we can attain perfection just by taking to devotional service, which simply starts with the chanting of the Holy Name. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, this is where the chapter ends. Gantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki jai, Srila Bhagavatpada ki jai, Anant Kodivasham Vind ki jai, Nitai Go Premanande, Hari Hari Bol, Om Tat Sat, Hare Krishna.